Andre Saint Laurent will be trying to get the puck through that sticky Toronto defense and get a win for the Olympia crowd. The Red Wings and the Maple Leafs tonight, live at 8 o'clock on TV 50, your sports station in Detroit. Tonight, from Olympia Stadium, the Detroit Red Wing Hockey Club brings you the game between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit Red Wing Hockey is brought to you by your AMC and Jeep dealers, home of the AMC Concord Pacer Spirit and Jeep vehicles, and by Labatt's. For beer at its finest, call for Labatt's. And by Bank of the Commonwealth, trying hardest to help. And by Little Caesars, a winner any way you slice it. And so again, we welcome you to Olympia Stadium, the home of the Detroit Red Wings, where in just a moment or two, the Wings will be moving out against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hi again, everybody. Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel. Sid, the Wings are coming in, having won two of their last three games, both of those victories over the Pittsburgh Penguins. And yesterday's contest played here at Olympia, a 6-2 victory, was a rather good performance, I'd have to say. Bruce, I think the Wings are as good right now as they've been all season, so I'm looking for a real good hockey game. But they have to be physically tough tonight because Toronto are one of probably the roughest hockey club in hockey right now. They're leading the league in penalties. They're a good, solid, tough, physical hockey club that's playing the type of hockey, more or less getting ready for the playoffs. Well, the one thing that I've been kind of uh, wondering about, and I honestly don't know for sure, though I have a hunch, is just who's going to be in goal for the Wings tonight. Jimmy Rutherford played very well yesterday, the day after his 30th birthday, picked up his fourth win on the season. And our understanding uh, later on today from word at, here in Olympia was that he was going to be in the nets again tonight. And yet they have just given us a starting in lineups which show Rogie Vashon in goal, which maybe doesn't come as a great surprise. Well, I think it is a surprise. Uh, you know, the, the fact that they won with Rutherford yesterday, beat Pittsburgh, a team that they wanted to, to beat, and Rutherford played well. I would really, I believe that they would come back with Rutherford. If they come back with uh, Vashon, as the list says, uh, it's going to be a surprise. Well, we're going to be looking at a little fire pond of a goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I speak of Mike Palmatier. Remember a season and a half ago when he made his debut right here? Yes, and he's a good one. He, uh, he comes to play each and every game. Uh, they're going to have to beat him, and I would think beat him high. He does a lot of flop, and he's down on the ice a lot. They're going to have to go upstairs, score goals on him. Well, they say if there's one thing that Mike Palmatier does not lack, it is self-confidence. He has a lot of that. And we'll have more hockey talk for you after we pause now for this. Sid, in one of the quirks of the schedule of the National Hockey League, believe it or not, here we are in the latter part of the month of February, and this is the first time the Toronto Maple Leafs have been to Olympia Stadium this season. And the first time, I believe the date is January the 5th last year, and the return of Dan Maloney, and I think that's a big thing. Maloney was a crowd pleaser here. I've always faulted him for skating, but he is rough and tough. And it's going to be really uh, interesting to see how he will go after some of the wings, especially some of the more timid fellas, uh, if he'll run them or not. Well, as you can hear from the background, the two teams coming out onto the ice. As is the case so often here at Olympia Stadium, you have that contingent of Toronto Maple Leaf fans, and they're dying in the wool fans, too. So we're going to have a noisy group here tonight, and there will not be an empty seat. I, actually, these two teams have played only one game all season long, and that was played the middle part of the month of December at Toronto, and the Leafs won it by a score of four to two. So after tonight, they'll still have two to play. You know, Bruce, talking about the Leafs for a moment, they've only lost three games in their last 14, so it looks like they've put their act together, and the Wings look as though they're coming back while well, winning two of their last three. So uh, this could be a very interesting night. Well, the Detroit Red Wings, we have talked about the goaltending. If they have a hot player on the ice right now, it might be uh, Vaslav Fedomansky, the fellow who scored a goal, assisted on a couple others yesterday, scored two in the game prior to that, 
And uh, Vasloff in his last 10 games has nine goals, five assists. That's a pretty good clip. Well, he's a good hockey player. Bobby Crown faulted him for not being a little rougher, but he can do everything. I would think Dale McCourt right now looks as though he is playing better than he has any time this year. Scored three goals yesterday. It's going to be interesting to see if he'll come back and play a big game right back tonight. Well, it could be when one fellow gets going, the other has to. They, of course, play in the same line with McCourt at center and Adamaski on the right wing. And Errol Thompson, who is facing his former teammates here tonight, is on the left side of the line. So we're looking for some fun here at Olympia Stadium. The game between the wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs. We'll be back with the opening face-off in just a moment. And the two teams out onto the ice in the blue and white uniforms. The Toronto Maple Leafs and in the white uh, jerseys with the red numerals, the Detroit Red Wings, who will be coming from our left to the right. And the Maple Leafs, led by goaltender Mike Palmatier, defending the goal off to our right. And it will indeed be Rogi Vashon who will be making the start in the goal for the Red Wings tonight and Mike Palmatier for Toronto Maple Leafs. The referee for the hockey game is Dave Newell, Ryan Bozak, and Bob Hodges are the two linesmen. And we await now the singing and playing of the national anthems prior to the start of this game. And the... Gene Alverson, who handles that chore on a regular basis here, is all set to take care of it again when everything is ready. The Wings continue to play without three uh, figures, two on the defense side. John Hamel, who suffered that cut tendon in the hand here a couple of weeks ago Sunday and will still be out for two, three weeks, they say. Greg Jolly, who, of course, has not played this season. He underwent surgery uh, prior to the start of the year, but he's been skating with the Red Wings and may well be back to finish out the year a couple of weeks from now. And, of course, Brent Peterson, the uh, highly touted uh, rookie who was injured in the fifth game he played, and he's out for the season. Here are our national anthem. Eugene Alverson handling the national anthems of Canada and the U.S. prior to the start of this game. The three officials at center ice, that is Dave Newell, and along with him, the two linesmen, Ryan Bozak and Bob Hodges. Oh. 
Wings are going to start the game with Billy Hogebaum at center ice. Dennis Polonich on the right wing. Over on the left side, J.P. LeBlanc. Back along the Detroit defense, Perry Miller and Reed Larson in front of goaltender Rogie Bastion. Toronto Maple Leafs will come out with Gary Monahan at center ice. Lanny McDonald on the right side and Dan Maloney on the left wing with Borges, Salming and Hutchinson back along the defense. And the hockey game underway. And from the face-off, the Wings win the draw. Reed Larson takes a bouncing shot at Paul Mateer. Clears it to the corner. Boyer Salming failed to work it out. Kept in by J.P. LeBlanc. Centering pass by Hogebaum. And Polonich's shot was blocked. Now Salming moves in behind his own goal. Clears it out on the left side for Dave Hutchinson. He sent it over on the right side. And Gary Monahan cleared it in behind the Detroit goal. Reed Larson heading in after it. He passed it over on the left wing. J.P. LeBlanc was checked before he could work it out. But picking it up with Polonis. Or rather, uh, Larson. Larson gets it out to center right. Here now is Polonis over the line with a shot that's reflected right to the net. And then cleared to the side by Sony. Coming right back out now, Toronto. Danny Maloney got it over the line. Wings failed to work it out. But Reed Larson covered up. Now Larson starts Terry Miller off. Miller. He just dumped a weak shot. Almost here. Juggled it a bit. Puts it into the corner. Polonis went in after it. But the wings are changing on the move now, and Toronto will play it out. Moving out, Lanny McDonald coming out to the right. And Dale McCourt moved in, took it right off the stick. Back into the Toronto zone, and Salmon stopped in. Now it's Toronto shooting it all the way down the ice. They waved off the icing, and so Tommy Bergman had to come back quickly to play it. He played it all the way back out to the right. Hutchinson of Toronto at his own blue line with Turnbull. Now the puck went back into the Detroit zone, and Terry Harper goes back after it. He was checked before he could reach it by Ron Ellis. They bumped him along the board. Play stays in the Detroit zone. Sittler dug it loose, put it out in front, but Tony Bergman broke it up. Now Bergman ahead to Dale McCord. McCord tipped it out center ice. Right. Harper has it there. Terry Harper in the wings over the line into the Toronto zone. He took a weak shot, and Paul Latier knocked that away. It's handed off now by Williams. Cleared into the Detroit zone by Burroughs, but the play is offside, and the faceoff comes out over the Detroit blue line. And a real good tempo to the game here for the first two and a half minutes or two minutes. One thing that Toronto is going to have to do, there's the coach Bobby Crown behind his bench, but one thing the Wings are going to have to do with this Toronto club is play their position, go up and down, and hopefully uh, stand the, the rough stuff. Toronto is going to try and pump them, though, Doug, uh, led by Hutchinson and Tiger Williams and Dan Maloney. Now Toronto sends out Butler on the right wing, Boutet on the left side with Jones at center right, and the Wings have Greg Carroll, Polonich, and San Leroy. Play is back at his own blue line with Willie Huber. Handing it ahead to Carroll. Greg Carroll just shot it to the Toronto line. Burrow sent it back out center ice, so Huber hands it off to Perry Miller. Buck fired into the Pittsburgh zone. It went in off the glass into the crowd. And so the play will come back out over the Toronto blue line. And a wild scramble for the puck behind the Detroit net. Greg Carroll goes in against Jones just over the Toronto line. No score. We've played 221 of the first period. Buck went all the way back into the Detroit zone. Dashon came out of the net. Stopping it there for Willie Huber. He has passed gone away from Perry Miller. They bump in along the board. Boutet and Miller. Miller lost his stick. He's down on the ice. That puck loose, though, and Boutet of Toronto played it back to the line. A shot by Turnbull, but out in front of the net. A puck that the whistle down and a play in the whistle down. Referee Dave Buell has stopped the play, and I believe he is in the process of calling a Toronto penalty. So while he does, we shall pause for this. Jerry Butler goes into the penalty box for holding at 2 minutes and 42 seconds. So the Red Wings are going to have a power play chance as if they lead the league in overall scoring with 58 power play goals. You know, and their power play can look 
awesome at times, the wings, but then there are other times when they don't get the play up over center ice. It's a case where they have to get in, get established in the Toronto zone, take advantage of their point men, get it back to uh, Metamaskey or back to Larson, hopefully run a screen out in front of top tier and get the fellows back at the blue line shooting the puck. Maple Leafs have given quite a bit of argument to referee Dave Mule, but to no avail. You know what happened there, Bruce? Perry Miller dropped his stick or lost his stick. And he was actually manhandling Butler, and Butler was trying to make a play, and then Butler wrestled with him, and he got Butler got the penalty. Now the puck went off the line, and it's center ice. Right. And they whistled it down as the play had covered two lines, and so they'll bring it back inside the Toronto Maple Leaf blue line for the faceoff. Well, it's Dave Burroughs, who came to this Toronto Maple Leaf team from the Pittsburgh Penguins, who's out there now at Boyer Solving. The wings have Dale McCord, Thompson, and Huber up front with Larson and Nedomansky back at the point. Buck knocked down with a high stick at center ice right by Nedomansky, so they'll stop the play. Bring the face off all the way back into the Detroit zone. Referee Dave Newell. The rings have the extra man for still a minute and 50 seconds. The time remaining in the penalty to Jerry Butler. Dale McCord goes in against Monaghan. He and Jones, penalty killers for Toronto. They swing in behind the Detroit goal with Metamansky, handing it off there to Dale McCourt. Now McCourt, down the left side, handed it back to Metamansky. Moving out to center ice, right. big net over the line. He dropped it there for Thompson. Thompson trying to move into position, played it off to the side of the Toronto goal. Palmatier fired it right up into the crowd. So they'll keep the face off in the Toronto end of the right side of the Maple Leaf goal. And while the referee wouldn't pass any call that, the Palmateer could get a penalty for just what he did. You're not allowed to deliberately shoot the puck out of the playing surface, and no doubt he did. Carol Thompson continues to wear that facial protection for the broken jaw that he suffered while he was sitting on the bench, no less, and got hit by a shot from his own player, Tommy Bergman, a few weeks ago. So the face-off deep in the Toronto zone. Dale McCord in against Jones. Puck stayed right there in the circle. Jones picked it up, played it in behind his own goal. Salming was checked by Huber, but the puck came loose, and the Leafs clear it down the ice. A minute 20 left in the penalty as Nedomansky turns in behind his own goal. No score in the game. The Wings have the extra man. Willie Huber dropped it back for Reed Larson. Larson comes out now to center ice. Winds up for a long shot. Paul Mateer cleared that away. Dale McCourt sent it back to the line. Nedomansky hands it to Larson with a shot. Knocked down. Out in front. Then Thompson fired one, and that went off Huber. Huber worked it back to the line. He was grabbed and pulled in the ice by Burroughs. And the crowd didn't care too much for that. Now Larson handing it off to Harold Thompson. Wings had some good chances, and they weren't getting it through. Now here's Nedomansky. Back over the line. He dropped it right there. And Thompson, moving the other way, couldn't get to it. And it's Ron Ellis who clears it to McKechnie over two lines offside. And so now we have 33 seconds remaining and the crowd getting on the official a bit. Big Walter McKechnie, former Red Wing, had a couple good years here and was traded to get him over to Cleveland first and then Toronto picked him up from Cleveland. He scored 21 goals so far this season for Toronto. He's having a real fine season. Now from the faceoff, Paul Wood sent it back to Willie Huber at center ice. Huber carries over the line, wound up for a shot. Paul Mateer juggled it, and it fell just wide of the net. Came back to the line. Danny Bolduck stopped it there. Bolduck trying to work away from McKechnie. Worked it back to Nick Libet. Libet out in front. Never took the shot. Now he did, and didn't get through again. Came right back to Libet. He goes chasing along the boards after it and shot it out center ice. Right. Well, Libet just waited and waited and finally took the shot. And again, the Wings have had chances, and they haven't really got it through the defense. And the penalty is over. Coming back out now. Penalized player Jerry Butler and the teams are at full strength. Here's Butler picking up the pass. It's going to rise. Willie Huber fouled him, and now he's going to go off. Huber's trying to get a penalty for all the way. And now Toronto is trying to lose the odd man. Well, Willie Huber got his arms up a little too high when he made contact. Butler was trying to break out and take a long pass from his own zone. We'll be back in just a moment.
A long, a long pass up along the boards, and uh, Willie Huber just took dead aim on the Toronto player, and as he made contact, he brought his elbow up and got a penalty for elbowing. Off for elbowing at four minutes and 52 seconds. Game remains scoreless. The play is back along the Toronto blue line. Toronto Maple Leafs, Ron Wilson, played it in behind his own goal to Ian Turnbull. Now Turnbull right out in front of his net, cleared it over on the right side to Sittler. Here's Darrell Sittler out at center ice, right side pass to Wilson into the Detroit zone with a shot. Last John knocked it away, and Tony Bergman cleared it to the line, but evidently not out. There's Turnbull, and it was Harper that deflected his pass away. Puck is held in the Detroit zone, though, back on the point to Turnbull. Turnbull faked the shot, played it along the circle now, and Lanny McDonald. McDonald's going right out in front, and he shot it over the top of the goal. Puck came back toward the line. McCourt knocked it off to the line a second time, but again, the Leafs managed to hold it in. Now Williams had the stick up high with Harper. The play came back to Turnbull. Turnbull fired it wide. Along the boards on the left side, it was kept in again at the point. Came back to Wilson. Here's Wilson out in front of backhand. Shot it loose for Lanny McDonald. And Livett covered up on him. Still it's loose out in front of Tony Bergman. Digs it away and skates it out to center ice. Ahead to Dale McCourt. McCourt got it over the line into the Toronto zone and brought it back out center ice and McDonald took it away from him. Lanny McDonald being chased by Paul Woods. And they go into the corner deep in the Detroit zone. It came back on the point to Wilson again. He kept it right there on the line. Here now Sittler playing it deeper in the corner to Lanny McDonald. There's a battle out in front between Dan Maloney and Terry Harper and now Maloney drops his gloves and swings the right hand. And Harper and the two of them put a bear hug on each other. Well, Harper was trying to keep Maloney out of position out in front of the Detroit goal, and Maloney finally just dropped the glove, swung the right hand. I don't believe he really landed with it. And the two of them with a bear hug at one another now, and the two linesmen trying to separate them. And that proves, Bruce, that even though you were teammates just a year ago, when uh, action starts in a hockey game, you can fight with them. Still the two of them tugging away at each other. And the two linesmen still trying to pry them apart. We have no score in the hockey game. Harper has that right arm, or left arm, around Maloney's neck. He's not going to let go for anything right now. He has a real headlock. Bobby Crom looks on, and now they two of them are separated. Oh, Maloney is bleeding. He really is. I don't know exactly how he got that. His nose is really bleeding. bleeding. Bleeding rather badly, and I think that happened not in the fight then. So while we figure it all out, we'll tell you we'll be back in just a moment. I own this place. Well, Toronto had possession of the play deep in Detroit zone, and they moved the puck around a few times, and it was just a case, I think, when Harper was trying to cover Maloney out in front of the net, their sticks probably come up, because Maloney has been bleeding, his nose is bleeding, and uh, I'm sure it didn't happen in the little wrestling match they had. Uh, Wilson of the Toronto club took an ice bag over to the bench. Terry Harper, I'm sure, didn't even make a swing. He had a headlock on Maloney, but... Uh, well, Harper gets five minutes, and Maloney, too. And Maloney is, I would think Maloney's going to have to go to the dressing room because they can't stop him. He is really having nose problems. Well, as I caught it, I believe it's Maloney, too, for roughing, and Harper gets five. Well, it's probably, probably because of the blood... Uh, right. No doubt there was a high stick thrown because I'm certain that that injury didn't result in the fight they had. It was a, a wrestling match, not a fight. Let's keep in mind, too, that uh, Huber is still in the penalty box for 18 seconds, so Toronto is going to have a golden opportunity. Bobby Crom in behind the Detroit bench, none too happy with the call. The delay in the game necessitated by the cleaning up of the ice. For Maloney suffered the nosebleed. He's gone to the first aid room. So Harper and Huber are in the penalty box on the Detroit side, and Ron Ellis will go in on the Toronto side, taking the spot for Dan Maloney. So Maloney is due out in two minutes, and Harper then will have to serve the entire five, whether or not the Maple Leafs should score. Well, the big thing, Bruce, is the fact that Willie Huber will get out of the penalty box in 18 seconds. That is the, the big man right now. They are two men short here starting, and uh, Toronto have a very, very good power play. After all, you, you saw me, 
Turnbull, Sittler, and big Walt McKechnie out there. Uh, they can move the puck around. Wings are two men short, and Toronto won now, as Sittler will go in against Dale McCord. Sittler won the draw. Turnbull turned with it right in the circle, checked in along the board by Reed Larson. And as they held the puck there, the quick whistle, they used up seven seconds. That means 11 more remain in the penalty to Huber. Then he'll come out. The two teams will then be each short of men. Now here's the court winning the draw, and Reed Larson firing it the length of the ice. Going back after it, Salming. Huber up and ready to come back out now. He does, and each team is short a man. And the Leafs lost the play. Here's Reed Larson, a quick pass ahead to Paul Woods. Over the line with a stop. Paul McTeer stopped there. Paul McTeer skated it in towards the corner, hands it off there to McKechnie. Now Ian Turnbull. And it's Salming at center ice. Salming. Turning with it, Dipsy doodling over the line, a right side pass for McKechnie. He wound up for a long shot, came right out in front. And a return shot by Williams deflected away. Tommy Bergman picks it up, cleared it out on the right wing for Paul Woods. He's got Sam Leroy coming down the left side. Sam Leroy around Stoning, and he went for a slide under the stick of the goaltender. And Paul Mateer finally picks up the stick. Here's a shot by Perry Miller, and Paul Mateer stops that. But kept in by Reed Larson. They jam in along the boards in the Toronto zone, and there's going to be a penalty coming up. The referee has the arm up in the air, and there'll be a high-sticking call, I believe, against the Maple Leafs, and Williams, Tiger Williams, is very unhappy. Well, it was Woods and Larson, really, that kept the play in, but Well, Paul Woods is at the top of his game right now. Uh, he's not scoring goals, but he is worth his weight in gold out there uh, because of his skating ability. He just made a terrific play, first of all, to St. Laurent. Then, when the play came back out, Larson kept it on the blue line, and they drew the penalty, which is a big thing for the wings because this offset the extra minutes that Terry Harper was going to have to spend in there. Well, it means now that for 46 seconds, the Red Wings are going to play one man short and Toronto two. So the Wings have the advantage now as Williams goes off for high sticking. Seven minutes, 48 seconds, the time of the penalty. No score in the game. Nedimansky and Thompson, the two forwards with McCord and Larson at the point for Detroit. Jones is the only forward on the ice for... Toronto, he won the draw, and Dave Hutchinson cleared it off the glass and down the ice. Back after it, Larson. Reed Larson's pass coming up to Nedimansky. He moves out with Dale McCourt. McCourt fired it into the corner in the Toronto end. Nedimansky went in after it, put it out in front, and chance for McCourt with a shot at the goalpost. McCourt drove it off the goalpost, and then he got to it and failed to hold it in. And the Leafs shoot it down the ice. 15 seconds remaining in the Maloney penalty. Now it's Reed Larson heading out. Here's Larson to McCourt, or rather to Nedimansky. Into the Toronto zone, he handed it off to Reed Larson with a shot. Paul McPeer knocked it away. Now it's Errol Thompson, and he played it beyond it. Dale McCourt, it's picked up by Ellis, who just came on, but coming back quickly, Thompson covered up on him. Ellis got to it a second time, but the wings slided back into the Toronto zone. Dave Hutchinson back after it, clearing it over on the right side for Stalming, center ice to McKechnie. Each team short one man now as McKechnie tries to work in, couldn't do it. Reed Larson cleared it over on the left side for Perry Miller. Center ice now to Nedimansky. Nedimansky lost it there. McKechnie was checked immediately by Miller. Reed Larson at his own blue line. Left wing pass for Errol Thompson into the Toronto zone with a weak shot that deflected way wide. Hutchinson takes it off the board for the Leafs and starts back. Here now, Dave Hutchinson moving over the line into the Detroit zone, trying to go through. He did. And there's Walt McKechnie with a shot, and that's deflected just wide of a wide open net. What a chance McKechnie had. The wings pick it up and clear it the length of the ice. McKechnie had an empty net with that shot out of the goal and shot it wide. And it, it's McKechnie's own fault. He's an experienced hockey player, and he Ladies just babied the puck. He had it on his backhand. He had the entire net to throw it in. Instead of bearing down and really putting it in the net, he just babied along and got a little deflection, missed the wide open net. 14 seconds remaining in Williams' penalty. The wing played Hutchison very bad. He just walked right through the middle of the Huber and Miller. Rogie 
Deshaun had to make a sprawling save, but then the payoff is an experienced hockey player like McKechnie had picked up the puck with nobody in the net and didn't really bear down on it. So in 14 seconds, it'll be Tiger Williams coming back on, and Harper will still have a minute and 44 seconds of his penalty time, minute 46 of his penalty time remaining. Play is in the Detroit zone. This time, Carroll won the draw. And Willie Huber skates it out center ice. Polonich on the right side, but it went off Turnbull's skate and wide of him. Coming way out of the net, Paul Mateer had trouble with it. A centering pass by Carroll is broken up. Now Williams is back on. Toronto has the odd man. And here are the Leafs moving out center ice now with Ron Wilson. A long pass on the left side for Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald pulls up the rim of the circle. Back on the point for Turnbull. Over on the right side, Wilson hands it off to McDonald and backs on, knocked away his shot. But came back to the line for Turnbull again. Now here's Wilson, he sets up McDonald again, and again backs on, came on and stopped him. And twice now, McDonald has been set up perfectly in the circle to the right, and backs on, stopped him on the angle both times. You know what a surprising thing, too, Bruce, is the fact that Coach Bobby Crom could cut. Sean makes two big saves here on Lanny McDonald, but Bobby Crom got caught with Greg Carroll out there killing the penalty. Ordinarily, it's uh, St. Laurent and uh, Woods. Uh, he got caught with Greg Carroll and Woods. The first time I can see Carroll, seen Carroll out there this year. Another shot by Lanny McDonald went just wide. Ron Wilson takes it into the corner. They play it over along the boards. It came back to Lanny McDonald. Now it's Sittler with it. Darrell Sittler along the circle with it. Played it back on the line to Lanny McDonald. Another shot. Deflected right on. And that's on. Cleared it away. Sittler had trouble along the boards, and the wings cleared it, but not out. Kept in at the line by McDonald. He hands it off to Turnbull. Turnbull goes to the corner with it. Into the opposite corner now to Sittler. Right out in front. Williams took the shot. Larson made the save. Reed Larson knocked it away. Toronto doing everything but putting it in the net, and now Dale McCourt picks it up and backhands it down the ice. A half a minute left in Harper's five-minute penalty. Ian Turnbull bringing it out now center ice for the Leafs back into the Detroit zone. Turnbull was checked by Tony Bergman, and it was Larson that failed to work it out. Wilson held it in. Now here's Wilson playing it along the boards in the Detroit zone. Back he comes to the blue line. Ron Wilson handing it off to Tiger Williams. He faked the shot, played it back to the line. Wilson holds it in there. Now his pass over on the opposite point. Turnbull fired the shot. That's on the save. It's the score. Coming right in, Lanny McDonald fired it in as it lay right there in the goal mouth. And Toronto leads 1 0. Well, they had their scoring chances, and Bashan was equal to every task. And this is a little bit of a fluke. The shot was taken from out along the board. Bashan makes the save. It's right along the ice. He loses possession of the puck. McDonald came in and just picked it up from the crease, and he had the wide open net to throw it in. And put Toronto out in front, one to nothing. And wouldn't you know, the goal comes at exactly the second that Harper was due out of the penalty box. Vachon didn't know where the puck was. He turned the wrong way. He thought it was underneath his pads, and instead it was in behind him, lying right in the crease. Lanny McDonald got the goal, poking it in with the empty net. Turnbull and Wilson draw the assist on the goal. Scored by McDonald. Now the play went into the Toronto zone. But the Leafs break it up, clearing it back out to the right. Walt McKechnie brings it in, handed it off to Anderson. He failed to get loose, and now it's J.C. LeBlanc ahead to LeBratton. And LeBratton, a one-man rush, and Salming took it away from him. It's cleared back to Anderson, picked up by Salming at center ice, back into the Detroit zone. He stripped, and Salming, waiting for a penalty that didn't come, took a pretty good bump from Willie Huber. And J.P. LeBlanc starts Hogabaum out. Hogabaum was dumped to the ice by Salming, and they're stepping into one another. Now J.P. LeBlanc and Salming, and J.P. LeBlanc is up and there's questioning referee Dave Newell. They're both going to get penalties. But LeBlanc was dealt to the ice rather heavily. But the referee is going to wave the two of them off. A kind of a surprise. Salming got knocked down first in the Detroit zone. Then he got bumped by Huber. Then he come out and got tangled at the blue line. So while they go in, we'll pause for this. 
Downing just lost his cool, I think, Bruce. He got knocked down deep in the zone. Then when he went in along the boards, Willie Huber took a little run at him and bumped him along the board. Miller first, I think, really partially tripped him, I would say. Then he gets knocked by Huber in the boards. Then he come up through center race, and he got knocked down right at the blue line. Then he took out his, his madness at J.P. LeBlanc. And the two of them go together for slashing at 12.35. So each team short a man. Toronto leads it one to nothing. McDonald's 24th goal from Turnbull and Wilson at 11.34. And that was the exact time that Harper was due out of the penalty box. So it is not a power play goal. Though he, of course, was just stepping out of the penalty box door. Now it's Tommy Bergman moving his way out center ice. A pass that went behind Livet. Goes the length of the ice. Hutchinson to touch it and an icing call against the Red Wings. Well, you talk about mistakes too, Sid, who wants to go off and cost you. And it was Reed Larson that had that puck and had it in great position, killing off a penalty. And he just sort of flipped it toward the blue line, and the Leafs had no trouble holding it in. Wilson did, and it ended up with the goal. Well, he was on his backhand, and no doubt he has a lot of faith in being able to raise the puck high on his backhand, but he didn't get the wood to it. And he put it right out to Wilson. It was just a perfect play. Wilson knocked it down, say, head high, and kept the puck inside the zone, and uh, first thing you know, it winds up in the net. Danny Maloney came back to the Toronto bench, so he's all right. Now it's Willie Huber. Bearing it ahead to Dale McCourt, coming out center ice. McCourt skated it to the blue line, stopped right there. Dave Burrows heads back, fired it over on the left side for Pat Boutet. Boutet carries into the Detroit zone. He was stopped by Harold Thompson, but the puck was picked up. Here's Turnbull going after it. Fired a shot. Bastron made the save, and still McCourt starts out. Now it's Harold Thompson going into the Toronto zone. He put it out in front. A chance for Willie Huber with a shot. And Burroughs got a stick on that and deflected it way up into the crowd. Bruce, as I see the game right now, and it's been a good first period, the Toronto defense, when Detroit is carrying the play and coming back towards the Toronto zone, the Toronto defense is standing well up at the blue line. When Toronto carry the play in, Detroit defensemen are giving them a little ground right at the blue line, and the Leafs are able to get inside the zone and then make little plays back out to the points and get causes troubles to the wing. 53 seconds remaining in the penalties of LeBlanc of Detroit, sounding at Toronto. Now it's Nedimansky and Thompson for the wings, and Toronto with Jerry Butler and Jones. Willie Huber holds it in, took a shot, knocked down in front, Errol Thompson scores! Thompson grabs the rebound and fires it in. And it's a tie hockey game. come out, deflected right over to Harold Thompson, and he jumped on it about 20 feet out in front of the net, put it right along the ice, buried it right from the hash marks. There was Thomas a, here had no chance to call. There was a penalty going to be called, said, uh, as Thompson was being checked from behind, but of course the goal being scored, and that's waved off. Harold Thompson gets his 16th of the season, and the Red Wings have tied the game at one aside. Now the play back into the Detroit zone. The wings failed to work it out. A shot from the blue line fired by Quinville. It's cleared back out center ice. Willie Huber drew one of the assists, but there was another. We'll check it for you. Ron Ellis with a quick shot inside the line, wide of the Detroit goal. Nedimansky dug it out of the corner, carried in behind his own goal. He's checked there by McKechnie, but the puck loose to Reed Larson. Now Willie Huber with a rolling puck, cleared it ahead to Nedimansky, trying to go through, and he failed to do it, and the Leafs bring it back out center right. Penalized players are back on, Salming and LeBlanc, each team is at full strength. From center right, Larson whips with a shot, Paul Mateer just got a piece of it. It goes deep into the corner, Lanny McDonald of Toronto. Clearing it ahead, moving with it is Dave Hutchinson into the Detroit end. He took a backhander that Terry Miller deflected that ends up into the crowd. And we shall be back after we pause now for this. Just a touch more than five minutes to go in the first period with a game tied one to one. Toronto and Detroit, and it's been a good one. Daryl Sittler and Tiger Williams are two forwards, along with Lanny McDonald for Toronto. The wings have Greg Carroll along with Dennis Polanich and Senral Ross. From the face off, 
Carroll won the draw. Perry Miller sweeps it out on the right side for Polanis. He had trouble with Williams, dug it away a second time. He's still kicking away at it, still deep in the Detroit end. They hold it in along the boards, and the whistle stops the play. Faceoff will remain to the right of Rogi Vashun. And it was Huber that drew the only assist on the goal scored by Errol Thompson. It came with each team short of men. Rogi Vashon doing a little work along the mask has not completed, so the faceoff will take place to the right of the Detroit goal. Four minutes, 51 seconds to play in the first period. 1-1 one, one tie. Puck came right back to Stoning with a shot, and Vashon reached out and grabbed that one. Big move by Rogi Vashon with that quick left hand. And That's Stoning. how important those face-offs are, Greg. Carroll just lost that face-off to Sittler, come right back out to Stoning, and he fired it through a screen. And Rogi Vashon threw that glove hand out on a puck that was going to go just inside the post down low, and he made a beautiful save. Now Maloney comes out to play the right side on a line centered by Sittler with Lanny McDonald on the left wing. Dale McCourt will take the face off against Sittler. Buck went to the board. Coming out with it was Terry Harper. Good quick pass to San Laurent. Andre San Laurent took a shot, but Stalming blocked that before it got through. San Laurent pulled his man off balance. The puck is held in. Here's Dennis Polonis with it, shooting it into the corner. Polonis is knocked down. San Laurent. Lift it deeper, but it'll be Salming covering up as he goes in behind his own goal. Gloria Salming turning out on the right side with a pass to Sittler. Now Daryl Sittler coming out center ice. Fired from center ice, right, shot it wide. Lanny McDonald and digging in after it, but he was covered by Carroll, and the wings start out with Terry Harper. Left side pass to Sam Law. Here comes another penalty. Here goes Maloney after Harper again. And down they go right at the Toronto blue line as Maloney took a shot at Terry Harper. Honest, I did not see it start. It was away from the plate, did you? No, well, I didn't notice it either. Uh, I would think, you know, they always say when you've been in a fight, if you want to even up for anything that happens, take your time. There'll always be a chance where you can really get even with a fellow. But here's the first shift that Maloney's been back on the ice, and he just made a beeline for Harper. And I'm sure he didn't cause any damage. Maloney's bleeding again. His nose is bleeding. He'll be going back to the dressing room again. He took a run at Harper right at the Toronto blue line. And he's going off. And they're going to send Harper? No, I don't think they are. Dave Newell is saying, I believe, to Harper, no. So it looks like it'll be Maloney only, and while they figure it out again, we'll take time for this message. Well, Terry Harper just smiling now because Dan Maloney has picked up two minor penalties. And he got just what he deserved. He made a run at him for no reason at all, and uh, this is what you call foolish penalties. Now, if the wings can capitalize, uh, Maloney has two for high sticking and two more for roughing at 15.56. And Terry Harper has no penalty. So that means the Red Wings are now going to back-to-back -back power play opportunities and a little revenge on the part of number nine, Dan Maloney. I imagine uh, has his coach, Roger Nielsen, a little upset. I would think so. Well, a fellow we talked about a little while ago, Greg Jolly, who's due back in the Red Wing uniform on the ice here in a couple of weeks, we hope, will be joining Sid Abel between the first and second periods of our broadcast location. So Detroit now with a great opportunity. They keep Greg Carroll out with Sam Laurent and Polonich. Jones and Carroll waved out of the faceoff. So Butler comes in to face Sam Laurent. Sam Laurent won the draw. Buck is cleared to the line, but that's as far as it got as the Leafs drive it back into the Detroit end. Willie Huber comes back after it. Now it's ahead to Dennis Pallon. It's a long left wing pass to San Laurent. Center right to Huber. Willie Huber over the line. He was knocked down by Jones. Really spun to the ice. And the puck cleared back into the Detroit end. They're bumping each other. 1-1 tie. 
Wings have the extra man. Here's Huber. It bounced away from him. And at center right, Jones picked it up, shot it back into the Detroit end. And the Wings not having anything going just yet. Reed Larson starts out. Now Larson took it over the line, bounced it toward the corner. Sam LaRoff put it out in front. And Polonic couldn't get to it. Oh, there's another penalty coming up now as Hutchinson really made a whack at the Red Wing player down below us, Reed Larson. Hutchinson is going to pick up the penalty, but now Hutchinson and Larson start to go at it with the two of them down on the ice. Willie Huber and Jones are doing a little shoving with a referee in between them. They probably played junior against one another a couple of years ago. Uh, Willie Huber's Detroit's number one draft pick. Well, Hutchinson was picking up the penalty. And then Larson went after him. Now, whether that Larson stayed out of it, the Red Wings would have had a two-man advantage. Now, Willie Huber and Jones have themselves a little tussle right in front of the Toronto bench. And the two linesmen, or no one of them, moves in there. They're not swinging. It's more of a wrestling match. And Hutchinson will go in, and so will Larson. I don't know how good a fighter Hutchinson is, but I'll say this. He picked on probably the best fighter on the Red Wing team and Reed Larson. Reed Larson can really handle himself. It got to be a wrestling match. Uh, Reed Larson, I don't think, could help himself, Bruce. They were locked up, and when a fellow goes starts to throw you down, you've got to try and hold your balance. And I think it was just a case he wrestled with them and wound up getting a penalty, too. I it would could be guess, that Hutchinson might get four now. I would guess that Hutchinson will get four because he had already picked up one penalty. Now Dave Newell skates over to warn the boys to get into the penalty box. Willie Huber and Jones still having words, but about 25 feet apart. You know, we were talking before, just the start of the game, Bruce, the fact this is Toronto's first appearance here. You know, this was always the big drawing card in Detroit. Toronto, Toronto more so than even Montreal many years ago. And it's a crime that you only play this club twice here in Detroit and twice in Toronto. And the fact that this, here it is, February the 19th, and they're making their first appearance of the year. This is a rivalry that's been going on in hockey uh, since this building was opened in 1927. So, uh... This is what the fans love. Tell you what else is coming up next Wednesday. The Red Wings and the Washington Capitals will go at it in Washington as we'll take a look at Dennis Hextall in uniform for the first time. And my last understanding, and I hate to say this, is that there is no telecast of a hockey game and no radio. That's hard to believe it because sure it is. would have been a dandy. Hextall will, well, it will be a dandy. Yeah, well, Hextall will be trying to even some scores against management, players, and whatnot in the Detroit club. In fact, I was thinking, Bruce, with if we were going to telecast it or going to broadcast it, uh, sitting up with the fans, that we better maybe put helmets on, too. <laughs> but this has been a terrific first period of hockey. There's been several little little fights. Uh, it's been a, a physical period. The big thing is the Wings have not been physical this year. Can they continue to play this type of hockey for 60 minutes? No doubt Toronto will, and it's going to be interesting to find out it would be nice to see if the wings could jump in front to find out then if they would just keep going up and down and up and down and bumping and, and see, find out just how great this Toronto Hockey Club is. Well, they have yet to post the penalties up there. Now they do. Well, they have one of them listed at two minutes. So I believe that's what's going to happen. Hutchinson is going to get a, or rather, yes, Hutchinson is going to get a two-minute penalty. Probably the original call. And then he and uh, Reed Larson will pick up five-minute additional fighting penalties. And Huber and Jones, probably five minutes for fighting because they have both already gone to the penalty, or rather to their uh, dressing room. So what it amounts to is Detroit is going to have a two-man advantage system. The play just come around. It was an innocent-looking play. Hutchison went in along, and he, and he took a slash at Reed Larson when, before Larson made a play on the puck at all. And then... Then he grabbed him, grabbed Larson along the boards, and Larson really didn't do anything until it got to be a wrestling match and where you try to hold your balance before getting thrown down to the ice, and Larson winds up getting a, a major penalty because of that. Hutchison's a big boy. He is the second leading penalty, uh, penalty man in, in the National League. Tiger Williams is uh, leading the league. 
The entire Toronto Hockey Club is the league leaders in penalties in the National League. Well, as I have figured it out, as best I can pick it out of here, the Red Wings are going to come out on top in the penalty department because Hutchinson has picked up two penalties, two for slashing and five for fighting. Larson gets five for fighting and Huber and Jones five for fighting. The only bad thing about it is that the Wings can't afford to lose Willie Huber. He is their shining light back there in the blue line. The referee and his linesman conversing uh, at ice on the ice out there is Dave Newell. Bob Hodges having quite a conversation. The big thing now, if the Wings can get possession of the puck, get in deep into Toronto's zone, take their time and move it around. They've got two extra men. They should be able to find someone that is open, but the, the passes have to be perfect. Well, the juggling of players in and out of the penalty box right now. And we're about to go. The Wings have a two-man advantage. We have a little more than three minutes to play in the first period. Detroit tied 1-1 with Toronto. Nick Libet jammed in along the board. By Marconi, Kemsal, Errol Thompson. He dropped it back on the blue line to Tommy Bergman to Metamansky. Back to Tommy Bergman. He handed it off the side of the net to Dale McCord. McCord fired a shot and it knocked away. McCord took a shot from a long ways away and at a very bad angle. Something you don't usually do with a two-man advantage. Now McCord has it deep in his own zone, handing it off to Tommy Bergman and now Metamansky. Here's Metamansky. Got it tipped into the Toronto zone. Turnbull goes in with Libet. Libet took a bump, still controlled the puck. Played it along the boards. McCord has it back along the blue line. Here's a shot by McCord. Knocked away. Out in front, Libet and Turnbull are in a jam up there. Turnbull has Libet stick grab. Here's Errol Thompson, and he shot it way wide. Wings with a two-man advantage. Libet and Turnbull battling in front. Here's Dale McCord. McCord circling with it, skating all over the ice, handing it back to Metamansky. He took a shot from way out. And it ended up in the crowd off a of Toronto stick. And the Wings with a two-man advantage really didn't get into position at all. They're not having a good selection of shots. Dale McCord on his first shot. He had players spotted out 20, 25 feet directly out in front of the net, and he shot from a from a right angle. It was not a didn't have a chance of scoring a goal. Tell you, Libet and Turnbull are really having a battle out in front of the goal. Well, that's what you call trying to screen. Mickey Libet's trying to hold his ground, and you notice Pommetier is involved in it too. And the referee went over and talked to the both of them. 51 seconds remaining in Hutchinson's penalty. A minute 55 and the second of the two penalties to Maloney. Had the Wings scored a goal before the five seconds. They've taken a 30-second break now, Toronto, to talk things over. I was going to say, had the Wings scored uh, a goal and during that rush, then Maloney would have still had about two minutes to serve his second penalty. But as it is, he now has 155 to go, so one of his two back-to-back -back penalties is by the board. And a timeout taken, and this it is the first time as long as we've been watching that a team has taken a timeout before the third period. And no doubt Roger Nielsen is doing this to give Turnbull and Salming Palmatier, and, and even Palmatier, Palmatier a rest because of the pressure that's been put on down there, but the wings, they're in ideal position. The face-off is deep in Toronto's zone. The big thing now is for Dale McCourt to see if he can win the face-off, get the play back out to his point, then and move it around a few times. They're trying to shoot from too far out instead of getting the open man and making a perfect pass and hopefully score a goal. So a two-man advantage for still 55 seconds for Detroit. Game tied at 1-1. Now it's Gary Monahan moving in against Dale McCourt. McCourt won the draw. Tommy Bergman handed it back to Metamansky. Now it's Tommy Bergman with it. Back to Dale McCourt out along the line. Metamansky with a shot. The puck went off of Libet. Driven back to the line. McCourt held it in. Now Tommy Bergman handing it to Dale McCourt. Fakes the shot. Held on to it. Back now to Tommy Bergman. Bergman took the shot. He fired it way wide. And the puck came all the way back into the Detroit zone. And with a two-man advantage, the Wings have not had a good shot in close. 
Now it's Dale McCourt down the left side. A one-man rush. He was jumped going over the line. With a two-man advantage, the Wings tried to send one man in, and the Leafs clear it all the way back in. To the Detroit zone. Nedimansky starts out. Now Errol Thompson and Dale McCord on the right side, Dennis Polanich. Polanich headed to the corner, held it there. Now Polanich held it onto the circle. Back on the line to McCord. McCord another long shot, and again it's knocked away. And now back on is Jerry Butler. The puck is fired back into the Detroit zone. The Wings have a one-man advantage. Errol Thompson held the puck in his own zone, now turns with it. Here's Thompson coming out center ice, right. turned around by Sittler. In the center ice zone, Thompson. Harold Thompson heads into the Toronto zone, goes chasing after it, took the shot and went over the top of the goal. The wings will hold it in. Sittler had Metamansky, gave him a wrap on the head, and Metamansky came back and swung at Sittler. And now Sittler and Metamansky go down on the ice. And there's history in the making. Metamansky actually turned around and swung a right hand at Darrell Sittler. Now that's the first for this year, Nedimansky. That's something that Coach Bobby Crom has wanted Big Ned to do all year long. Get involved in something a little more physical. It's catching, I guess, this uh, rough, tough type of hockey. Sittler had lost his stick. He turned around and took a whack at Nedimansky. And then Nedimansky came back, dropped the glove, and swung a right hand at him, and they'll both go off. We have 35 seconds remaining in the first period. It's been a wild one. Game is tied at one to one. Here is a case where Nedimansky was trying to make a check on Sittler, and Sittler cross-checked him way up high on the back of the head. And Nedimansky, while trying to keep the play, the puck in the zone, turned around to keep Sittler out of it. There's Sittler gave him a right push. Hand. Nedimansky turns around and surprisingly, I would think it even surprised Sittler because might have Nedimansky surprised, doesn't. Might have surprised Nedimansky. <laughs> he turned around and uh, took his swing, so they're both in the penalty box. They give them each five minute fighting penalties again. Well, the wings with 35 seconds remaining in the period, 31 seconds left in the penalty to Dan Maloney, still have the extra man, but they have done very little with a great opportunity. Barry Miller back along the blue line. He handed it off to San Lara, back on the line. Miller let a shot go, knocked down in front. It ended up in the crowd, deflected up there. And they'll bring the face off in the circle in the Toronto zone. Leafs want the face-off out over the Detroit, or rather the Toronto Blue Line, but not so. Well, we have played almost an hour here in the first period, a little less, about 55 minutes. And it's been a wild one. Red Wings have six and Toronto nine in the penalty department, if my bookkeeping is right. The goals are one apiece. One of the Red Wing penalties, however, was a five-minute penalty to Terry Harper. Monahan made the move about four times against Greg Carroll when the puck was dropped. He handled it. Then it's taken away by San Lara. Back on the line to Miller. Terry Miller's pass broken up by McKechnie. It came out center ice. And they rule that the Wings has sent it back in offside. 14 seconds to go in the first period. Well, Detroit had a two-man advantage for a full two minutes and didn't do a thing with it. The shots on goal, I believe, when they are posted at the end of the first period, will find Detroit well out in front. Now Dennis Polonich with a bouncing puck over the line. It's played back out center ice. Harper has it there. And the play is whistled down. The puck knocked down with a high stick, but there's only five seconds remaining. But the faceoff will come deep into the Detroit end. So Maloney is due out in one second, and Bobby Crom in behind the Detroit bench. A little disappointed over the fact that his team has had every opportunity here in the first period. So far, as power plays have been concerned, but he has none to show for it. And the game remains a 1-1 tie. Toronto's goal came at 11.34, the exact time that Terry Harper was due back out onto the ice. It would not be a power play goal, but... 
Harper had, of course, no opportunity to get back into the play. Walt McKechnie positioning his man, but the faceoff won by McCord. It came loose out in front. And it's picked up by the wings. Dennis Polonit as the buzzer goes to end a wild first period from here at Olympia Stadium in Detroit. And as the two teams make their way to their respective dressing rooms, we tell you the end of the first period with a score. The Detroit Red Wings won. The Toronto Maple Leafs won. And so after one period of play, the Detroit Red Wings and Toronto Maple Leafs tied the game as one-to-one. -one. In the first period, the Wings outshot Toronto by a slighter margin than what I thought it might be, 13 and 11. Well, a fellow that we'll welcome back into a Red Wing uniform, I hope in a couple of weeks or maybe even a little less, is joining Sid Abel right now. Let's join Sid and Greg Jolly. Thanks, Bruce. Greg, before talking about your injury and the fact that you're coming back to lineup, I'd like to hear just a few comments from you about this rough, tough first period we just played. Well, it's a, it's a good hockey game, Sid. Uh, both teams are skating and hitting, and, uh, you know, that's our game, and we've got to come out skating, and uh, Toronto's a hitting team, so uh, they're going to come out hitting, but... Uh, you know, there's a couple rivalries now because there's a couple players used to play in Toronto that used to right. play here, and uh, I'm sure they want to win, and we want to win, so it's an uh, interesting hockey game. All right, Greg, the fact that you're not playing yet with the Wings this season, do you attend the team meeting like at noon? Do they talk about the fact that, uh, does Coach Bobby Crom go over the fact that this may have been a rough hockey game? No, not really. Uh, it's just like any other game. Uh, we take uh, Toronto's uh, best points, and we try to utilize our best points against them, and uh, we just go go about like uh, we do for every other team. Uh, we know that they're uh, they're a hitting team, but they're not fast like we are. So we're trying to utilize our speed. Now let's just talk about Greg Jolly. Last year in the playoffs against Montreal, after having a terrific season with the Wings, you injured your wrist. Do you want to go on and just tell our viewers uh, what happened? Well, uh, as everybody knows, I injured the wrist again in the playoffs, and. Uh, I was put in a cast for uh, several months, and uh, when uh, the cast was removed, uh, the injury uh, hadn't healed, so uh, therefore they had to, uh, had to do surgery on it, and uh, I went into another cast for another longer period of time, and a month ago I got the cast off, and now I'm just going through therapy and waiting for the, the wrist to heal and so I can get back in action. All right, Greg, after spending pretty well all summer, and I know that your home is out in Calgary, did you have an idea that after spending all summer that you wouldn't be able to play when you reported to training camp? No, I was uh, all set, ready to go when uh, training camp was around the corner, and uh, I worked all summer trying to get into shape, and uh, I was very disappointed when I came to camp and I couldn't. I found out that I wouldn't be wouldn't be able to start the season, but uh, that's the breaks in hockey, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to come back before the season's over. Well, you're not the only one that was disappointed, the young man. I'll tell you, both Ted Lindsay and Bobby Crom were praising your play last year. Now you're skating with the club. You've been skating for a couple of weeks. I understand the little notes we get that you they made some kind of a brace for your wrist today. What's that? Well, I went to Ann Arbor and got a brace made, and uh, hopefully I'm, uh, I was told I was going on the next road trip, so uh, hopefully I'll be going not to sit in the stands, I'll be going to play. You mean that soon? Because I understand you're going on this road trip now back to Washington for Wednesday and to the New York Islanders on Saturday. Do you expect to play that soon? Hopefully, Sid, yes. All right, now, when to, to play, Greg, uh, you haven't been able to practice full tilt, have you? I mean, do you, uh, would you know who that you're going to be paired with, or would you just be used sparingly? I'll probably just uh, fill in duty uh, here and there till I get uh, the feel of things again. But, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, you got to get into game condition to get yourself in a real good shape, and uh, you can't do it just by scrimmaging with the team. And uh, it's tough to come back at this, time, this point of the year because everybody's in great shape. But uh, I've got confidence in myself, and I think I, I can do a job. All right, Greg, reporting back to the club and on the fact that you didn't play, there was so much talk at the start of the season that after the Wings had had the big year last year that they were on their way. Well, this year has proved a little bit of a disappointment. Is there any special reason in your mind why things haven't clicked? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's a combination of a lot of things, uh, a little bit of bad luck, and uh, being such a young team, the players panicked, and, uh, you know, they had such a great year last year, and they weren't used to losing, and uh, things got going bad, and... Everybody tried to do it themselves and uh, not play as a team. And consequently, uh, you know, when it's just individual effort, uh, you just can't win hockey games. And I think that was our biggest fault. All right, now you have an outstanding young fellow, uh, number one draft pick, joined the hockey club this year. Uh, if you were to come back, if you were to play with Willie Huber, would that help your enchant your game? Because uh, you're a puck carrier and you play, you, you move the puck real well. 
Uh, would you enjoy playing with a fellow like Willie Hubert? Oh, yeah, I think I'd, uh, I'd like to play with any, any of the defensemen on the team. I think they're all great defensemen, but, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to play with Willie. He's, uh, he's big, and uh, he moves the puck well. He's real smart. He plays his position well, and, uh, you know, he'd help me a lot because uh, he could carry the puck out a bit more, and I wouldn't have to do so much work. All right, Greg, let's just talk Greg Jolly, the... I guess the well-to-do farmer out in Western Canada. I understand you own a farm near Calgary? Well, I'm not exactly a farmer. I'm just a pleasure farmer, Sid. I've got a couple of horses, and that's about it, but uh, I'm no big farmer by any means. Now, uh, you spend your summers back uh, in Western Canada. Oh, that's right, yeah. I spend them in uh, Calgary. I've got a little store there now, and uh, that keeps me busy for most of the summer. Married? Oh, yes. Yeah, married with one little boy. Good. You know, you're a favorite of mine, Greg. I have to tell a story. Back in 74, I went away out to Calgary to watch the junior playoffs. And you were selected as the number one player in Canada by Washington. And it's really a pleasure to see you wind up in Detroit. I hope you're happy here. Oh, I sure am, Sid. Uh, it's a great hockey town, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to spend a few more years here. Well, Greg, I want to thank you for taking time, by, taking time out to stop by. Get back in the lineup. Very best luck to the Wings for the last 24, 25 games. And I hope your game just comes on as strong as we know it will. Thank you very much, Sid. Now let's go back to Bruce Martin. Sid, we thank you and Greg Jolly for an interesting conversation between the first and second periods from here at Olympia Stadium, where the score is tied at one to one, and we shall be back with more after we pause now for this. Well, Sid, we had what I'd have to call a kind of a wild first period of the hockey game here between the Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs with the total penalties as they gather them at 15. And I think if there was a disappointment for Bobby Crom in that first period, it had to be the play of his team with that extra man. We have mentioned that they have scored 58 power play goals this season. That's more than anybody else in the National Hockey League. And yet you'll never have a better opportunity for a solid two minutes, a two-man advantage, and yet they really didn't threaten. Bruce, as you mentioned, it was a terrific, like it was an old-time hockey game. Knock them down, then get up and get knocked down again. No doubt Bobby Crom is a little put out in the fact that they didn't score. But that's the way the Wings have played pretty well all year long. They have looked terrific at times on their power play and the fact that they are leading the league. But then there are other times that they don't get over center ice with the puck, so I think Bobby Crom has to expect that. But he at least had a chance to put five of his better hockey players on the ice. I thought they made a bad selection in some of their shots. Instead of working the puck in a little closer and maybe taking it where they could get it and have just about a dead-on chance of scoring goals, they were shooting from 35 and 40 feet. The screen was out in front of Palmateer, but it was the Toronto defenseman that was making all the saves. Palmateer didn't really have to come up with anything at all when they had the two-man advantage. Well, this is perhaps a frustrated them to some extent, the fact that they weren't able to work it in close, and so they figured, well, if we can't do it this way, we'll, we'll fire it from out here and see if we can't get to a rebound. I gave Nick Libet a great deal of credit on that power play because he was taking a heck of a working over out in front of uh, Palmateer, but he stayed right there and did the job he was there to do. Well, there was a case now when Nicky Libet was involved with Turnbull, Amateur got in the act, too. Now, that's when the puck should have been shot, when they are involved with the player out in front. But the wings hesitated on shooting. Then it would come back, say, to Bergman. Bergman would be 35 or 40 feet out. He would take a look, hope for the screen. While nothing was developing directly in front of the net, it was out maybe five, six, or eight feet out in front. Then he would elect to shoot. And Turnbull and those fellows saw me, and then were just turning the puck aside or deflecting it and putting up in the crowd. And it was a case where the wings were too just got too excited about trying to score the goal instead of taking their time and making sure of the one shot and putting it in the net. Well, Sid, as you look, and we have watched now 56 games the Red Wings have played this season. We have watched a heck of a good first period. The Wings out shooting uh, Toronto 13-11 and 11, and a game tied at 1-1. to one. Good goaltending on the part of both of the two teams. Now, what do you look forward to in the second period? I don't think there'll be a let-up, Bruce. The big thing is, will the Wings continue to play? Because the Wings have had problems putting 60 minutes together. I'm hoping that the Wings can come back and play as well in the second period and as well in the third period as they did in the first. If they do, I think they can win this hockey game. But they can't let up because any time you can put Sittler and McDonald and Salming, fellows like that, and Walt McKechnie who can score goals, you put them on the ice, Toronto will move the puck and they will move it into position for a guy to get a good poke at the net. And then hopefully Bashan could be hot. It looks like it's going to be a tremendous hockey game. Well, the Red Wings and Toronto will be playing without two of their big scoring guns for the first uh, four and a half minutes or so of the second period because it was uh, late in the period that Nedomansky and Sittler went off for fighting. And I think that anybody looks over the box score and sees uh, Vaslov Nedomansky, five-minute fighting penalty, they're going to figure it's a typographical error. But he came up and swung a pretty good one. 
Well, the two teams will be coming back out to get the second period underway. We're looking forward to it. And we'll be back with the second period face-off in just a moment. Super Six Tire Centers brings you moments to remember. What current member of the Detroit Red Wings holds the National Hockey League record that he set in his rookie season? So, Sid, you ponder that one over, and we'll tell you a little more about it a little later on. We'll tickle your funny bone with an hour of comedy starting with Make Me Laugh at 11 and The Gong Show at 11.30 tonight on TV 50. So, Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel, our producer Marvin Muse, with you from here at Columbia Stadium in Detroit where the Red Wings uh, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are in a 1-1 tie. I recounted here while I had the opportunity, and uh, my statistics now show that Toronto had a total of 10 penalties in that first period, and the Red Wings six, so one of the Red Wings six penalties was a five-minute major penalty to Terry Harper, but the Wings fought that off. It was just as Harper was getting back out onto the ice that uh, McDonald scored. So it was really not technically a uh, power play goal, though Harper was really not even onto the ice, and McDonald jammed it in. Harold Thompson got his goal with each team short of man. J.P. LeBlanc and Boris Soming in the penalty box at that time. Metamansky and Sittler went off at 19.25 for their five-minute fighting penalties. Jones, uh, Larson, Huber all picked up five minutes, and so did Hutchinson at 16.52. So they'll be gone for the first minute and a half or so, or somewhere around there for the start of the second period. And Bruce, of the shots that were taken, the 11 shots that Toronto had, uh, Lanny McDonald had four of them, Turnbull two. Then the other uh, six were taken, one apiece, Williams, Monaghan, Salming, Wilson, and McKechnie. For Detroit, the leading shot maker in the first period was uh, Reed Larson with three. Perry Miller had two. Dale McCourt had two. And then the rest, Nedimansky, Woods, Thompson, Huber, and Harper each had one. So, uh, and it was a very, I would think, even Steven first period. 13 shots to 11, pretty well uh, dictates as to how the game went. I did feel this, though, that the Red Wings perhaps had more scoring chances that were stopped out in front of Paul Mateer that weren't actually recorded, of course, as shots and goals. Yes, the only time Bashan was real busy is when Toronto had the man advantage or the man advantage uh, about midway through the period, and they caused Bashan to come up with two or three saves. And they scored the goal uh, just right when Harper's penalty was up. So there are three players on each side of the penalty box, three of the Wings and three of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hutchinson and Sittler and Jones of Toronto, Huber, Larson, and Nedimansky of Detroit. And the referee skates over there to see if the timer has everything set up. The teams are at full strength, actually on the ice, all of those in the penalty box serving five-minute majors. So Dale McCourt with Errol Thompson, on one wing and over on the other side now is Dennis Polonich. The absence of Nedimansky. McCourt won the face off from Walt McKechnie and now it's Terry Harper coming out. Harper wound up for a long shot. Paul Mateer stops that easily and Salming goes in behind his own goal. Now Borier Salming played it on on the left side and Joel Quinville brings it up center ice right and dumps it deep into the Detroit zone. That John came out of the goal. McKechnie stopped his clearing pass. Put it out in front. There's Maloney, and he just failed to get to it. Buck came back toward the blue line. McKechnie has it there. McKechnie shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. Thompson and Harper bumped in the corner. They jam in along the board. Harper goes right in after Maloney. And that puck is still loose. Dennis Polonich finally kicked it away. And coming out with it is McCourt. Dale McCourt faked the shot from the blue line and flipped it in toward the corner. Quenville covered up on him. And Borier Salming turns it back out with a good pass to McKechnie. Walter McKechnie moving his way out center ice, drops it off from Maloney. Maloney digs into the corner again. Harper taking right out in front. And Vashon made a on Ron Ellis. Ron Ellis was wide open, and Rogie Vashon covered up perfectly. Now the play back into the Toronto zone. There'll be a penalty coming up to Quenville, who grabbed on to Errol Thompson. On the delayed call, here's Thompson with a chance. His shot was blocked out in front. It came back to Harper. Uh, the Red Wings have lifted their goaltender for the extra attacker, and as Toronto gains possession, the penalty will be called, and Detroit will have still another power play chance, and we'll be back to see what they do with it after we pause for this. Joe Quenville has gone off for high sticking at 124 of the period, so the Red Wings now will have a power play chance, the 11th penalty to the Toronto Maple Leafs. 
And both goaltenders have been tested here early. Vashan made a terrific save on a play that was kind of a surprise play coming from behind the net, come right out to Ellis. Ellis got to wait a minute it hit a stick, and Vashan just come up with a fantastic save. Then Errol Thompson had an equal chance down at the other end. Vashan was really alert on Ellis' shot. Now Paul Woods is centering a line with Bulldock and Libet. Play went in behind the Toronto goal into the corner. Libet went in after it, being checked by Turnbull, pulled away from him. In behind the net, played it back to the point. Back there is McCourt with a shot, and it went just wide. Now Tony Bergman for the other point, and he broke his stick on her. He didn't break his stick, but he got only a piece of the shot. It was kept in by Bergman. He slid it into the corner. Coming way out of his net, Paul Mateer cleared it right onto the stick of Woods, but it slipped away from him. And moving out now is Monahan. He took Butler's pass, goes into the Detroit zone, went around the court, and he scores! Bastion came out and just missed him. And Monahan gets a shorthanded goal, and Toronto takes a 2-1 to lead. Surprising play, and it didn't really look all that dangerous. And Monahan has only scored one goal this season. He just cut. That's what you always have to be careful of. You catch a forward back playing the defensive position. He just went straight down his wrong wing. Let on he was going to go around behind the net, then pulled over sharply. Vashan somehow missed the puck when he played. He came out on his elbow with his goal stick and missed the play altogether and it went right in the net. Well, Slid. the Red Wings gave up a shorthanded goal in the game against Pittsburgh yesterday, and they have given another one here. Butler will draw the assist. He started Monaghan on his way. It didn't look all that dangerous. Now the play is back into the Toronto zone. Reed Larson whistled a shot, but he fired it just wide. And it lodged in the back of the net, so they'll bring the face off all the way out over the Detroit blue line. The Wings still have the extra man for a minute and 10 seconds. And had Reed Larson's shot been on the net, it would have been in because Pometeer was playing pretty well in the middle of the net and missed the post by a couple inches. So the play will come out the center ice zone just over the Toronto Maple Leaf blue line. Jones in against Paul Woods. Woods won the face off. It came to Reed Larson. Larson just sent it into the corner. Turnbull fires it off the boards to the line. Willie Huber held it in. Now Huber dumped it off the side of the circle to Woods. Back to Huber. He fired a shot. That was blocked by Butler. Just got about five feet out in front of Huber. They shoot it down the ice. Vashon hands it off now to Larson. Out on the right side to Dan Bolduck. Ahead of him is LeBratton. Danny LeBratton carries over the line. His pass tipped away by Stoning. And again, the Leafs shoot it the length of the ice. And Vashon drops it off for Larson. And the crowd changes in a hurry a moment ago. And Vashon just robbed Ron Ellis. They were all for him. And... They made a bit of a mistake on the last goal, and they're riding him now. Here is Willie Huber carrying into the Toronto zone. It came back to Reed Larson. He fired one right on a loose puck out in front. They score! Willie Hogabaugh! Hogabaugh in the rebound to tie the game at 2-2. Two and, two. and that's Billy Hogabaugh's first goal for the Red Wings. He's only been here for two or three games. This was a tremendous shot by Larson from just inside the blue line. A Toronto mistake. They put it right back to him. He walked into about 40 feet. Pometeer made the save. The puck came right back out to Hogabaum, and Hogabaum made no mistake with it at all in the empty net. Pometeer made a, a, a first save on Larson's blistering shot, but then he couldn't cover the rebound, and Hogabaum made no mistake at all. And that's a good thing in hockey when you can bounce right back and tie it after giving up a bad goal. Larson and Huber draw the assist on the goal by Hogabon. He had scored one early in the season for Minnesota. Now he scores one for the Wings. He has two on the air. Teams are back at full strength, and the Leafs bring it back into the Detroit end offside. So they'll come out over the Detroit blue line. Hogabon from Larson and Huber at 3 minutes and 11 seconds on the power play. And Bruce, I'm going to ask you, was that a power play goal? No. Both teams were playing five minutes out, I'm sure. No, I believe Quenville was off yes. for high sticking. That's right. Was it not? Yes, he went off at 124. And the goal at 311, so the Wings gave up a shorthanded goal and then scored. Now here's Terry Harper clearing it out center ice. 
Boye Salming has it there. He didn't wait long enough for his team to come back. And they whistle it down on the offside, and they'll bring it out center eight. You know, an oddity about this game and the fact that there have been so many penalties, Detroit's leading penalty timekeeper, penalty man uh, for the season, uh, Dennis Polanich, hasn't been involved in one thing tonight. So you can always expect some kind of fireworks from little Dennis Polanich. Teams at full strength as McKechnie centers McDonald and Maloney. And the wings have Carroll with Polanic and San Lara. Buck bounced back out center ice. McKechnie carried it back into his own zone and now turns with it. Here's Walter McKechnie. He cleared it into the Detroit zone. The wings didn't go after it. Lanny McDonald did, but it skipped away from him. Carroll's pass went right through Polanic and Maloney holds it in. But he put it right on the stick of San Lara and San Lara and Carroll start out. The play broken up right at the line by Quinville, and now it's San Lara turning back at his own blue line for Detroit. Being chased by Lanny McDonald, San Lara sends it off to Perry Miller. Now Miller, San Lara, San Lara with a bouncing puck over the line, being chased by Quinville. Quinville took him in high along the board. Now the two of them drop the gloves, and they're going to go at it. And down on the ice, Quenville went in very high on San Lara, and then San Lara spun off the check and gave Quenville a little jab, and the two of them are on the ice with the two linesmen down between them. And Bozak, Ryan Bozak, and Bob Hodges have had their work cut out for them, but you hit it on the head, Sid. Things haven't changed a bit between the first and the second period. There's no love lost here. I would think that possibly Andre St. Laurent might wind up getting a little extra, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, they'll be heading in, and we'll be back with more after we pause now for this. Andre San Laurent is going to pick up an additional two minutes by the looks of things. Well, when he bounced off the board, Bruce, he brought his stick up real high and hit Quinville up pretty well up in the shoulder or up under his helmet. And he gets a roughing penalty, then five minutes for fighting. Quinville just gets the five minutes. So they will have uh, a case where Quinville just made a Quindle play along. Really he run high. him, but then Andre St. Laurent came back. Quinville goes back at him, and uh, no one was hurt on the little ensuing fight, but the uh, little wrestling match. Kind of a mismatch. Quinville's a pretty big boy, and Andre St. Laurent is not that. I would say it was rather questionable because certainly Quinville came up with a stick up and he could have got a boarding penalty. So now the wings are short a man. It's San Laura has the extra two minutes to serve. Play goes back into the Toronto zone with Salming turning in behind his own goal. Boy is Salming starting out. Here's Salming coming out center ace. Salming drove it off to the side of the net. Tommy Bergman went after it, didn't get it out, but it bounced off a Toronto player up into the crowd. And the faceoff will come out over the Detroit Blue Line. And so now the Red Wings have had eight penalties and Toronto 12. We have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine major penalties in the hockey game so far. That's a lot. Here's Nick Livett as a penalty killer. He took the puck right to the Toronto line, turned around, sent it back to Tommy Bergman. Bergman, a bad pass deep in his own zone, and Reed Larson had to cover up, but it's still deep in the Detroit end. Livett got into it. And Sittler held it in. Salming hands it off to Wilson. Wilson put it right out in front, and Williams deflected it over the top of the Detroit goal. Back to the point now for Salming. On the right point to Wilson. Wilson fired it into the corner, going in. Libet and Williams. They puck stayed right there. Lanny McDonald sent it back to Salming. Here's Salming driving a shot. Libet blocked it. And Tommy Bergman tipped it ahead for Libet. Salming is without a stick. Livet moves over the line into the Toronto zone with a shot, and Paul Mateer blocks that, and then dumps it into the corner after he held it for a bit, and the Leafs will play it. 45 seconds remaining in San Laurent's minor penalty. Now the Leafs start out again. Quick pass over the line into the Detroit zone for Butler, and Tommy Bergman deflected his shot high up into the crowd. And it's been sustained action really since the opening faceoff of a hockey game. There's not an empty seat. If there are, there are very few of them here at Olympia tonight. And the crowd has been on its feet a good deal of the time. And had Nicky Libet got a little more on his shot, he kind of surprised Palmateer. He cut Salming without a stick. 
the gypsy dude coming back in and he just snapped a little shot and it handcuffed Palmateer, but it didn't have enough steam to go right through but it come within a whisker of scoring and putting the wings out in front so now the play will be to the left side of the Detroit goal Walter McKechnie with Ellis and Anderson up front Turnbull and Wilson back at the point on the power play for the Leafs McKechnie won the draw here's Wilson at the right point Laid it over on the opposite side. Aaron Turnbull fired the shot. Last John kicked it away. Ellis took it off the board. Back to Turnbull. In the corner now to McKechnie. Walter McKechnie skated it back toward the line. Errol Thompson knocked it away from him. Sent it down the ace. Dale McCourt was free, but Wilson beat him to the puck. Ten seconds left in the Detroit penalty. Game tied at 2-2. We have 13 and a half minutes to go in the second period. Walter McKechnie over on the left side to Ellis. Ellis trying to work around Harper. Harper took it away from him. Penalty is over. The wings are back at full strength. And a pass too far for Dale McCourt. As Polonich had come back out after serving the minor penalty for San Laurent. And they would have been in two on one, but the pass was not there. Now it's Turnbull. And Wilson and now Anderson for Toronto into the Detroit zone. Here's Anderson with a shot. That's Tom made a big save high off the chest. McKechnie dug the rebound out of the corner. Being checked by Dale McCourt. McCourt knocked it away from him, and Harper lost it off to the side of the net, but it's Miller who covered up. Barry Miller goes back after it a second time. Over on the right side to J.P. LeBlanc. He split it off center ice. Now it's McCourt handing it back to LeBlanc into the Toronto zone. LeBlanc pulled up at the line, and he shot it back out center ice. As Miller came in, fired the shot, but he was way offside. So they'll bring it out over the Toronto Blue Line. Daryl Fittler with Pat Boutet and Dan Maloney now for the lead. And the wings have Billy Hogebaum, Danny LeBreton, and J.C. LeBlanc. Larson and Hubert. Now it's Dave Hutchinson moving it out to center ice. Here's a right side pass broken up by Larson. Larson cutting in. Larson moved in for a shot and was blocked by Salming. And now Boutet heads right back for Toronto. Boutet just dumping it off to the side of the Detroit goal. Huber went in after it. Cleared it along the boards, but not out. It's picked up right out in front, and the shot by Sittler knocked away. Boutet holds it in. Played it off to the side of the goal. Maloney's pass out blocked once. It came back to the line, Stoning with a shot. And it went right through the goal mouth, and they score on the rebound. Sittler grabbed the rebound and fired it in. And it's 3-2 to two, Toronto. There is a case where Toronto just jumped on a loose puck before the wings could. J.P. LeBlanc tried to make a play out in front of the blue line. Dan Maloney handled it behind the net, made a bad pass out to come right out the middle. Salming took a whack at it. Sittler, being a goal scorer from a just about an impossible angle, turned around and wheeled it right along the ice and went through Vachon's pads into the corner of the net. But it was a mistake, first of all, by the wings. And Rogi Bashan couldn't get down to block the empty net soon enough to beat Sittler. So Daryl Sittler, the lead captain, gets his 26th of the year. Salming and Maloney draw the assists on the goal. As the Leafs go into the lead, the time of the goal at 8.03. Now the play back into the Detroit zone as Reed Larson played it behind Nick Libet. It goes down the ice into the Toronto zone with Salming quickly back after it. Pat Boutet turns. His pass deflected away, but the Leafs Hutchinson has it. Now back into the Detroit zone, trying to go around Huber. Couldn't do it. It's still loose in the Detroit end, though, with the wings clear it out center ice. Salming shot it back in offside. They'll bring it back out over the Detroit blue line. So with the game 3-2, Toronto leading. We'll be back in a moment. 11 minutes and 7 seconds still to go in the second period. Tonight's game starting at 8 o'clock. Shortly after, 5 after 8. Here in Detroit, rather than usual nighttime starting time of 7.30. Leafs move it into the Detroit end offside. Just barely, really, as Sittler would have been cutting right in on top of Vashun. Detroit now with Greg Carroll at center ice. They have moved Perry Miller up to the left wing on the line. 
And Dennis Polonich on the right side. Miller is there because San Laurent remains in the penalty box. He and Quenville serving the remaining portions of their five minute fighting penalties. Carroll goes in against Butler. Lanny McDonald hands it back now. Burroughs cleared it to the Detroit line. Lanny McDonald got a stick on it there. Turnbull has it. Now Ian Turnbull back into the Detroit zone. He was checked by Tommy Bergman. Dennis Polonich's pass tipped off to the center ice zone. Lanny McDonald with it there. He put it right on the stick of Tommy Bergman at the Detroit blue line. Now Tommy over on the right side to Harper. Terry Harper's pass picked off center ice by Williams, and Dave Williams shoots it in behind the Detroit goal. Bergman went in after it. Left side pass, but it's taken away by Sittler. Here's a chance for Turnbull and Sittler, and the puck went over the top of the Detroit net. Dennis Polonich coming back. His pass hit Greg Carroll in the back, and they leave, keep it in the Detroit zone. Playing it in behind the Detroit goal, Tony Bergman turning out on the right side now. Here's Bergman bringing it out to center ice. Tommy Bergman just bounced it right to the goal. Paul Mateer handles that easily, and Borja Salming cleared it ahead just too far for Sittler. Reed Larson's pass, that's broken up by Williams. Davey Williams looking for Sittler, played it beyond him. It goes in behind the Detroit goal with Harper in after it. He took a pretty good bump along the board from Lanny McDonald. Williams gets into it, and the puck is held long enough for a face-off to the left side of the Detroit goal. And for the last two and a half or three minutes. It appears though the wings have lost their zip. And it's in Toronto that are carrying the play. The wings are backing in and letting Toronto bring the play to them. Face off will be in the circle to the left of the Detroit net, tended by Rogi Vashon. Toronto leads the game three to two. We've just passed the halfway mark of the second period. Fourier Salming with a line with a shot. That's on the save, and it bounced away, and the wings turn out with it. Coming out now, Dale McCord on the right side. Metamansky failed to get loose. Play broken up center ice by Errol Thompson. He lifted it back into the Toronto zone. Salming, who seems to be on the ice all the time, goes in after it. He played it out to Jones. It was kept in at the line by Willie Huber. Huber played it beyond Dale McCord. It touched him in behind his own net. Now Dave Hutchinson, he lost it to Harold Thompson. Thompson drove it into the corner again and Salming in after it. Play deep in the Toronto zone, but Boreas Salming starts out a long pass just too far for Anderson. Goes the length of the ice, Fast John plays it into the corner for Netamansky. Netamansky had trouble with it, kicked it in behind the goal. Fast off Netamansky in behind his own net, turning away from the check of Jones. Now cleared it to Willie Huber. Huber was turned around. He dumped it ahead, but not out. Jones held it in. Anderson, he's checked by Huber, and now the wings start out of their own zone. Here's Harold Thompson. Center ice. Thompson ahead to Netamansky. Netamansky fired from the blue line, shot it wide. Huber along the boards after the loose puck. Took a bump from Hutchinson, and they leave. Just play it out center ice. Knocked down there by Larson and picked up by Thompson. He turns it back at his own blue line. Handing it back now to Huber. Willie Huber's pass hit a player and bounced right up into the face of Errol Thompson. And he goes down on the ice. Buck actually took a crazy bounce off the Toronto player and caught Thompson under that protective mask. So Errol being tended to by trainer Lefty Wilson will head for the dressing room and we pause right now for this message. Just one of the oddities of hockey, Earl Thompson coming back after having a fractured jaw. The puck was just a, a, a little play by Huber that bounced off a player, come right up and struck Thompson in underneath the mask. He wears a big facial mask over, but it comes straight up from the stick Boy, under Errol. his mask, and he went right to the dressing room, so he must be cut. Errol must be wondering. He's been hit on the bench, had his jaw broken when his own player fired the shot there, and he was on the Detroit bench, and now... His own player this time, Willie Huber, fired the puck that ended up under his mask, and back to the dressing room he goes for first stage. Now the play is in behind the Toronto goal, and the Leafs in possession start out. Long pass, Perry Miller covered up at his own blue line, sent Danny LeBratton turning, center ice to J.P. LeBlanc. LeBlanc played it too far for Miller. Miller, though, did tip it away from Ellis, but it ended up in the crowd. Well, we have talked about Mr. Netamansky. He has had himself a great few games in recent uh, 
times. Matter of fact, over the last 10 games coming into this one, Adamanski with nine goals and five assists. And he will be featured between the second and third periods of this hockey game here at Olympia. Detroit with Paul Wood, Nick Livin, and Danny Bolduck now. Jerry Butler has McDonald on, or Sittler has uh, McDonald on one wing and Williams on the other. Terry Harper from center ice dumps it along the boards. It slides into the Toronto zone. In behind the goal, McDonald was checked there. That puck is in among skates. Bolduck got it loose, but the Leafs will bring it out. Here now moving with it is Burroughs, Dave Burroughs. He fired it into the corner in the Detroit zone. It bounced to the side of the Red Wing goal. Bastion hands it off to Nick Livett. Livett under a head of steam, but his pass is too far for Bolduck. Dave Burroughs went back after it. Now the Leafs start back. McDonald's pass to Sittner going in with Williams. A shot wide of the Detroit goal. And Williams was turned around by the Red Wing player, Bolduck. Harper picked it up. He starts Bolduck off to center ice. Livett coming down the left side. Bolduck over the line. Bolduck was checked right there. Williams cleared it out, center ice. Bolduck picks it up, hands it off to Perry Miller. Miller's center ice pass to Libet on the left side. Paul Woods dumped it off the boards into the Toronto zone. And behind his own net now is Quenville. Here's Quenville coming out with it. Quenville rolled it into the Detroit zone. Larson was tied up, couldn't handle it. A shot stopped to the side of the net by Rogie Vashon. And it's... Reed Larson in behind his own goal. Now Larson's pass bounced off Carroll, came loose at center ice. Leaf shoot it back in, but the play is offside. And we shall be back after we pause now for this message. The Toronto Maple Leafs three, the Detroit Red Wings two. Six minutes, 20 seconds to go in the second period. Teams are at full strength. One of the few times in the course of the game that the penalty box is completely empty of players. Greg Carroll will go in against Walter McKechnie. McKechnie won the draw. Now Quenville brings it to the Detroit line. He was stopped there by Tommy Bergman. And it's taken away by Willie Huber. Huber played it out center ice. Stan Leroy back at his own blue line. Hooked off the puck. And the play came back in offside. And the wings are questioning the referee because the player was hooked right at the line. The puck went loose. And had it not been for an offside, he was in cold. Ron Ellis. Now Dan Maloney in against San Leroy. Covering up was Polonic. Still low. There's Maloney with a quick shot. And the save made by Vassan. The wings shoot it out center ice. Borea Salming has it. Salming handing it back now to McKechnie on the right side. Ron Ellis cutting in. Ellis shot it wide. Puck kept in at the line by Quinville. His shot was blocked by Polonich and ended up in the crowd. And so we'll have the face off in the circle off to the right of the Detroit goal. And that's what I was talking about playing positions. They just left this right side there all, all the way into the zone and the pass come across to Ellis. He had clear sailing in. His shot was wide. But then the wings in pursuing Ellis all got pulled out of position when the play came back out to the point. Toronto had another excellent chance to possibly put the puck in the net, but the puck was deflected off Polonich and went, went up in the crowd. Three to two, Toronto leading Detroit. It was 1-1 into the first period. Toronto went ahead two to one. The wings got it back on the power play goal by Hogebaum, and now Sittler has put the Leafs out in front. Dale McCourt from center ice just flipped the puck off to the side of the Toronto goal. Butler played it in behind his own net. Errol Thompson is back on, evidently okay. The Leafs come back, though. Here's Butler down the boards on the left side. Under a head of steam, a backhand shot, and Vashon stopped that. Dale McCourt in behind his own goal. The left side pass for Thompson. Errol Thompson bringing it out center ice. Wound up for a long shot. Paul Mateer kicked out away. Butner sent it over to the side, and Boutet dumps it down into the Detroit end as Perry Miller heads back after it. Miller's pass to Thompson. Thompson's return pass didn't get through to Dale McCourt, and the Leafs shoot it in behind the Detroit goal. Harper clearing it now to Nedimanski. Big Ned down the right wing. Nedimanski over the line. He went by one man, dropped it for Errol Thompson, and he shot wide. Oh, what a chance Thompson had on the play by Nedimanski. The shot went wide. They take the puck to the board, hold it there. The face-off remains in the Toronto end. 
And you know, when Big Ned winds up like that and comes with a full head of steam, he can be just as colorful as any hockey player in the National Hockey League. He reminds you of Perot when Perot used to wind up and go end to end. I was going to say a little bit of Frank Mahavlis. Yes, used to. very much so. He's a beautiful skater. Can really pick him up and lay him down. And uh, he just made a, a terrific play. Earl Thompson's shot had it been on the net. I think it would have gone in because Palmateer didn't expect him to shoot at all. So the face-off stays in the Toronto end to the right side of Mike Palmateer. Leafs win the draw. Quick pass up the ice. Here's Anderson heading after it into the Detroit zone. He wound up, didn't take the shot. Romy Bergman and his man covered up. That was Lanny McDonald. So Paul Woods took the puck in behind the goal, kicked it loose to Reed Larson. Larson turned around by Sittler, and Larson just laid it into the corner. McDonald will play it for Toronto. It came to Anderson, covering up with Bolduck. Now Bolduck back down the ice for the wings, over the line, into the Toronto zone. His pass knocked away from Nick Livett by Salming. Tommy Bergman held it in, but Sittler intercepts and starts back. Three-man rush for the Leafs. Daryl Sittler hauled down by Paul Woods, and the puck came back out center ice with Salming in control there. He's being bothered by Livett. He dumped it ahead, and Anderson shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. The wings come back after it. Paul Woods into the corner now to Reed Larson. Larson heads out. Here's Larson under ahead of steam, moving toward the Toronto line into the leaf zone. He dropped it right there. Lanny McDonald poked it away from Tommy Bergman, but Bergman being back, covered up, got it a second time and shot it out. Picking it up now is Larson. He's got Bolduck on the right side. Larson just flipped the shot. Paul Mateer knocks that away and it went in behind the Toronto goal. Lee Sanderson drops it off for Hutchinson. The big guy bringing it out center ice, lifting it high in the air. This there will be an icing call as Perry Miller of Detroit goes back to touch it and the play comes into the Toronto zone and we'll be back with that face off after we pause for this. Just about five minutes away from 10 o'clock here in the Detroit area, and the game still has 3.19 to go in the second period. The game has started at 8 o'clock, so it has been stretched out since. And, Bruce, I was just going to mention the fact that Ned Nedimanski's on. I uh, taped the show with him, and we talked about the European rinks and about European hockey and, of course, the Russian series. And he made some very interesting comments about it. He's an interesting young man. Now the Leafs win the face-off, have the play in their own zone. Ron Ellis dumped it in behind his goal for Turnbull. He and Turnbull, a good pass on the left side. It was tipped away from Tiger Williams, picked up by Billy Hogabaum, and he played it behind J.P. LeBlanc. A bouncing shot. Vashon came out of the net, handled it, and sent it off to the side of the goal. Barry Miller, his quick pass, too far for LeBreton. Ian Turnbull back at his own blue line, and Hogabaum intercepted his pass, but the play came back in offside with LeBratton ahead of him. Toronto were trying a lot of long passes from deep in their zone, trying to flip it by the Detroit defense as they move up, and hope, hoping that some of their forwards can outskate the wing defense, especially when they have Harper and Bergman out there. Both the defensemen are a little on the slow side, and they're trying to just outrace them to the puck. Two minutes, 49 seconds to go in the second period. Now the play came out center ice. Monahan shot it in behind the Detroit net. Vashon came out to play it away from Williams. Wings lost it, though. LeBratton had trouble with it. It came back to the line, over the line, and Burroughs brought it in offside. Very close play at the Detroit Blue Line. The old bugaboo to the Red Wings, in deep in their zone, they at times treat that puck as though it were a hot potato, and they just uh, make little mistakes, and it costs them so dearly time and time again. They can play well for, say, 50 minutes of a game and look as though they're going to run a team right out of the rink. Then they come out and play bad for five minutes and lose the entire night's work. Errol Thompson and Bill Hogabaum, the goal scorers for the Wings. Lanny McDonald, Gary Monahan, Daryl Sittler for Toronto. Three to two, the Leafs lead. Here's Boutet intercepting a pass. But his return pass broken up by Greg Carroll. Now Carroll from center ice took a shot that deflected away. And it was Paul Mateer who came out of the net, shot it all the way back out center ice. Stan Leroy had to wait for his team to come back on side. Now Perry Miller's pass too far for Carroll. They're going to call a nice. No, they didn't because Paul Mateer came out and knocked the puck away. So it's Salming who lifted it out center ice again. Miller tipped it and Dennis Polonich picked it up. 
Alana turns it off to San Laura off the Detroit blue line. Now Willie Huber. His pass went right to Quenville of Toronto. And Quenville sent it to Perry Miller of Detroit. San Laura goes chasing after it. And they play whistle down offside as the wings moved into the Toronto zone. And we have a minute and 44 seconds still to go and in for, the second period. I was going to say for the first time tonight, hockey got a little ragged out in center ice where neither, neither club appeared as though they wanted it. They just kept throwing it back to one another and the play all in center ice. But other than that, it's been a tremendous hockey game. Only one other game in the National Hockey League tonight. And that'll be later on out on the West Coast with the New York Islanders and the Los Angeles Kings at Los Angeles. Carroll comes right back now with Polonich and San Laurent. And the reason for this is that when the Wings sent on their Netomaski, McCord, and Thompson line, Toronto came back with a checking line of Jones and Butler and Williams. So Detroit moved back out with Carroll, San Laurent, and Polonich. Buck went into the Toronto end, going in after it. In behind his own goal is Dave Burrow. Burrow's pass coming out to Jones. He flipped it down center ice. Reed Larson has it there. Back at his own blue line with Tommy Bergman. Tommy skates it all the way in behind his own goal. Now Bergman sends Reed Larson into the corner after it. Larson lifted it out to center ice, bouncing the puck high in the air. They scramble after it there. San Laura dug it away, took it over the line. Being checked there by Burroughs, he got it loose to Carroll. Carroll has Tommy Bergman open. And they pass deflected high off his stick. At center ice, Reed Larson took it away. He lost it, though, came right back to him. And again, Larson played it behind Polonis. Polonis is chasing after it, cleared it in behind the Toronto goal. There's a minute to go here in the second period. Three to two, Toronto lead. Now, Tommy Bergman played it ahead to San Laurent. He's jammed in along the boards by Turnbull, and the faceoff takes place right along the Toronto blue line. Interesting game coming up, Bruce, on March the 2nd over in Windsor. The Montreal old-timers, Rocket Richard, and Henri Richard, and Maz Bell, and all the old-time Montreal Canadians are coming down to play the Red Wing old-timers. March the 2nd in Windsor, and I understand that, uh, well, no doubt it'll be a tremendous game. Uh, they have a lot of fun, but uh, I recall they played in this building back a number of years ago and had 15,000 people in. filled the building, and they didn't disappoint us all. Now here's Sittler carrying into the Detroit zone. Trying to work around Perry Miller, and he put it right on the stick of Nedomansky. Ned comes back with Errol Thompson. Thompson wound up from center ice. Paul Mateer drove his shot away. It bounced all the way back to the center ice zone. Willie Huber of the wings clearing it back in. It caroms in behind the Toronto goal. Going after it is Hutchinson. 20 seconds to go in the period. 3-2, to two, Toronto leads it. Now Dan Maloney at center ice. Play broken up by Huber, who slides it back into the Toronto end. Paul Mateer went in behind his own goal. He got mixed up there, and he now skates it all the way to the corner. Time will run out, though, as the puck bounced out center right. McDonald after it, but the buzzer goes. And we have now played two periods of hockey with the Toronto Maple Leafs leading the Red Wings in a good one by a score of 3-2. to two. The end of the second period will return to Olympia Stadium in just a moment. While they play the Scoro game down below us, that will be the crowd reaction you hear as we advise you to hurry to your nearest Super 6 Tire Center where you can save on four-ply poly Blackwall snow tires. Any size through eight, two for $59. Hey, fans, stop in at any Parts Plus Auto Store. Fill out a coupon for a fan appreciation award of two box seats at the March 20th Red Wings and Chicago Blackhawk game. On each televised game starting tonight, Parts Plus will present this Fan Appreciation Award during the Parts Plus post-game show. The Michigan State Spartans are in the thick of the Big Ten basketball race, and they'll be meeting some top competition when they play Purdue this Thursday night at 8 on TV 50. Well, Sid's guest tonight is Vaslav Metamansky, one of the Red Wing leaders in scoring and in power play goals. In the last 10 games, Ned has accounted for nine goals and five assists. And Sid had an opportunity to talk to Ned recently after practice about his scoring spree and the recent Russian National Hockey League series. Ned, you scored 11 goals in 63 games with the Wings last year. Here you have 25 goals in the first 55 games. Just looks as though you're adjusting to the National League. Do you find it easier this year? Yes. I think so. Uh, National League is a little bit different than 
WHA or international hockey. Uh, closely checking and uh, fast skating. Now, um, now I do triple league. Last year I haven't played so much. We play on four lines. And I came to this club after first, I would say, two months, or three months, and after first 16 games, and I, so I just settled it to our team. Now I feel pretty good, and I, I hope I will continue to score some goals. All right, Ned, last year when you joined the club, you were a center iceman. Yes. This year, Bobby Crom has uh, saw fit to play on the right side. Have you found any problem in adjusting between center ice and right wing? Oh, I always playing uh, center. You know, I played for 16 years, and it was my first time. Actually, I play all the time on the right side. Uh, sometimes I, I will find that it's a little, little bit uh, easier for me because I can skate, I, I can find the holes, and I can uh, take a uh, volley shot from my forehand, which is better for me. All right, now you had played European hockey and was the captain of the Czechoslovakian national team. We just had the challenge series where the Russians were here. Did you get a chance to see any of those games? Yes, I saw this, uh, the, worst, the worst game, this last one, six to nothing. You know, I uh, was a little bit surprised, you know, with uh, this way, how they won this last game. But don't forget, they, they have, been practice, have been practicing for the last 15 years, 11 months every year, sometimes three times a day which I think will really help them to play the hockey like we saw, the last skating and good passing. All right, over in Europe, everybody talks from the fact that your rinks are longer, they're wider, uh, and the European uh, player gets a chance to skate. There's not as much body contact. Yet the Russians come over here and played the National League game and won the series. Uh, do you find a difference in the, in the rinks? Yeah, yes. It was the first time when I came over, you know, I, if I tried to turn, I sometimes, you know, hit the board because it's very really 10 feet you know, wider in, over, over there in, in, in Europe. And the they haven't played so many games over here, and even the last few weeks they were, have been practicing, have been practicing in, in Holland. And I think, you know, it fits their style because they are strong and they can stay. Now, body contact. The Russians seem to take all the body contact. Uh, when you played back home in uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, was there body contact in your game? Uh, I would say our defense when they play really better with body. Those guys, they just try to push or they try to keep back in front of them. And because they are so fast, sometimes it, it, it is enough, you know? Right. Don't get caught and just forecheck this player with puck. All right, now let's just talk one question about the wings. You have 25 goals. Did you set a goal for yourself before the season started as to what the wings would do? No, not really, no. But I, I would be happy if I would score something between 40 and 50 goals because I, I feel I can do it. And I'm sure they're looking. <laughs> Ned, thanks ever so much for stopping by. Thank you. Now let's go back to Bruce Martin. Vaslav Nedomansky, a very interesting young man and quite a hockey player. The score here after two periods, Toronto 3, Detroit 2, will return to Olympia Stadium in just a moment. And so we say hello again from Olympia Stadium here in Detroit. Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel, the game 3-2, to two, Toronto Maple Leafs leading after two periods of play. Sid, I would say, it was a very evenly played hockey game up until the time that Daryl Sittler jumped to that rebound, fired it in, gave Toronto a 3-2 to two lead, and from that point on, it seemed that uh, Toronto, the one that definitely carried the play. You know, we were saying at the end of the first period, Bruce, that the Wings would have to continue playing the way they did in the first yeah. period. They stopped. They stopped skating. They let Toronto start to carry the play to them. They backed into their own zone, and they were in trouble, and Rogi Vachon made several big saves. Thomas here wasn't really tested that period to speak at all. No comparison to the way he was tested in the first period. But the Wings may get fresh, a fresh lease on life now with only 20 minutes to go and come out and start carrying it to the Leafs. In the second period, Toronto outshot Detroit 10 and 6. That would make the overall shots and goal. Toronto 21, the Red Wings 19. Sid, you mentioned, I know, midway in our play-by-play -play, uh, of that second period, the fact that a good bunch of buddies of yours and of mine who get a great kick out of playing hockey and they don't do it for big paychecks I'll tell you will be doing just that playing hockey uh, in Windsor very soon well you know the Red Wing old-timers Bruce are a very active group here in Detroit 
And this is, I think, the highlight of their season, to play Montreal old-timers, the fact that the players like Doug Harvey and the Richards, uh, both Henri and uh, the Rocket, Red Story's coming into referee, and he was one of the most colorful referees. And I understand Ted Lindsay's going to play, and of course, Bill Gatsby, Jimmy Peters, and just a, a tremendous bunch of fellows here. And I would believe this club, the Red Wing Old Timer, would be a pretty tough hockey club to beat. They play probably 15 or 20 games a season. It's all for charity. And I'm just going to run through. They have several games here in March. March the 2nd over in Windsor, they play Montreal. That's their big game. March the 9th, they're up at Saginaw, Michigan, and they go up there each year, and they just fill that Saginaw building. They play there on the 9th of March. March the 17th, they're over in Strathroy, Ontario, playing a senior club over there. March the 21st, 24th, they play the University of Michigan Dearborn, and they close out their season on March the 31st at Alpena, Michigan, and I understand Alpena is waiting, just waiting for them. They are going to take their wives with them and spend a weekend up there, and I'm looking at our schedule because I would like to go up with them. Well, it's a fun place to uh, to be, and it's a, it's a great thing to watch because I don't think uh, I've enjoyed hockey any more than I have watching the old-timers, and you mentioned it earlier. I think, again, you hit it right on the head when you said that they have a heck of a good time playing the game, but by the same token, they play it with a great deal of seriousness. You know, Bruce, they play hockey the way hockey, I think, should be played, with a lot of finesse. They skate into the holes. They pass the puck. They have a rule they're not allowed to slap the puck, and I think that's good, too, because today's hockey, the kids are all winding up over their heads and trying to slap the puck. The old-timers play with an awful lot of finesse. They get into the hole, they pass it, and they pass the puck. Stay on, on a rush coming down. When you think of Joe Carvess, that I hate to mention his age, but I don't know, he's got to be up in the neighborhood of 60. He comes down and he makes three or four passes. Jimmy Peters in the corners, Joe Cloutier, and really, it's uh, really so nice to watch. I come down and watch some practice. I'm not playing anymore, but I come down and watch some practice, and I get a bigger kick out of watching them play than uh, possibly even the Red Wings at times. You know, and you talk about some of the, uh, they don't mind us calling them old timers, that's what they call themselves. My thoughts go back to a, a fellow who you uh, played under and worked alongside for a while. I speak of Jack Adams. And then what made me think of it is uh, talking to another old friend, Johnny Mowers, the other day, who explained the fact that uh, watching every single game that's on television, listening to every single Red Wing game that's on radio, and just as interested in the Detroit Red Wings today as she was when her husband was coaching and general manager of this team is one of the finest ladies that's ever been my privilege to know, and I speak of Mrs. Helen Adams, uh, Jack's widow. What a, what a great person she is, and what a hockey fan. Eh? Well, listen, she's had a lot of schooling to be a hockey fan, and she's still a tremendous Red Wing fan, and I, uh, she just, she enjoys following the old-timers, too, by the yeah. way. She comes out and watches a lot of their games, and uh, I know she loves to come down here, watch the Red Wings play. Now we just hope that the Red Wings can straighten out, and uh, now with 24 games to go in the season, can make it an, really an enjoyable uh, last part of the season. Well, we'll see what they do the last part of this hockey game. We've played two periods. The game is 3-2. to two. Toronto Maple Leafs lead it. We'll be back with a third period face-off in just a moment. Super 6 Tire Centers brings you moments to remember. What current member of the Detroit Red Wings holds the National Hockey League record that he set in his rookie season? Well, the answer is Dennis Polanyi. He drew 302 minutes in penalties over the 1975-76 schedule, the highest figure ever recorded by a right winger over one season in NHL history. Jack Lemon swims up from the bottom of a bottle, but Lee Remick's drowning in booze in Days of Wine and Roses, tomorrow's 8 o'clock movie on TV 50. So the Detroit Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs will be coming out in just a moment or two to get the third period underway. And I'm telling you, nobody has left this one. The Red Wings, who twice have come from behind to tie the hockey game. Lanny McDonald scored at 11.34 the first period. And the Wings, a couple minutes later, 13.51, Errol Thomas with each team, uh, Thompson, with each team a short a man at the time. McDonald's goal came with Terry Harper just stepping back out onto the ice after having served a five-minute penalty. And it ended one-to-one -one the first period. In the second period, the Red Wings picked up a power play chance when Quinville went into the penalty box at 124. Gary Monahan uh, scored a shorthanded goal to make it two-to-one. The Wings got it back on the power play effort by Bill Hogabom. His first goal as a Detroit Red Wing, he had scored one earlier with Minnesota this season. So it was now two-to-two. -two. And then the Sittler, with his 26th of the year, a rebound after Vachon had made the stop in Salming. At 8.03, that uh, gave Toronto the go-ahead goal as the Leafs outshot Detroit 10-6 in that second period. 
Toronto out onto the ice now. The Red Wings have yet to make their appearance to get the third period going. Bruce, before the start of this third period, I think it's appropriate that we wish happy birthday to Bruce Norris. This is his birth date. And I would think Bruce is probably here for this hockey game. And the little girl that works in the Red Wing office, Kim Squires, is also having a birthday today. And Greg Maxey, uh, Todd and DJ wanted to...